Okay, good. We're um, along the trail here, and we got a mountain in the background. You see that mountain? You know what mountain that is? Let me pause here so you can get a good look. Notice the top is kind of blown off, and there's a crater inside and a little dome, snow-covered, glacier-covered dome in the middle. This is Mount St. Helens. What's unique about this mountain in all of America is that it is an active volcano and most recently uh, was active in 2009, 2005, 2004. Uh, but the big, the big one, oh wait, here's a spider. Check this thing out. What's up, buddy? Okay, cool. Anyways, what's unique about this mountain is that it only erupted 35 years ago. The big blast happened in 1980. The big blast that took off the top of the mountain. And an incredible shock wave spewed ash 12 miles up into the upper atmosphere and created a pyroclastic flow that's a, a flow of water and ash and gas um, that obliterated the landscape down here. Can you see this? This landscape down here is only 35 years old. They protected it once the mountain blew up and they said, let's study this. Let's study what happens when a volcano erupts the landscape is completely obliterated, buried under up to 60 feet of ash. What's going to happen? So you can see here that there are there is plant life coming back. There's a better look. And you can see the ridges of some of the ash that is starting to erode. And there's even a river down there. There was a river before the blast. And water keeps traveling, making its way down. So the river called the Toodle River is there as well. But this blast happened on the north side. We're looking at the blast that came at us and leveled everything in our path. And I hope you can hear me with the wind. Um, leveled everything up against this ridge, up and over the ridge. So this is the first zone where everything, um, all life was obliterated. Because we're talking about trees, I want to talk to you about two things here at Mount St. Helens having to do with trees. The first is the different zones where as you radiate out from the mountain, what happened to the trees? I'll talk to you about that. And then the second thing is what happened after the blast as far as what humans came in and did to try to get the landscape back to what it once was. So a lot to talk about. I'm gonna cut out right here because it's windy and we'll get back on the trail in a little bit. All right, Mount St. Helens. All right, folks, talking about the different zones of destruction that Mount St. Helens wreaked on the landscape around here. Part of nature at its finest. Uh, zone one, as far as trees are concerned, all trees basically vaporized. Nothing here. So we're in zone one right now walking around. You can see um, any tree that you see here is less than 35 years old. There's a lot of um, alder, which is a nitrogen fixing plant, um, and a lot of beautiful wildflowers too. Um, but that's what happens in 35 years when you cover a landscape with ash. So we'll get into zone two in a second. Well, I don't know about a second, but a couple of miles, a couple of seconds for you. All right. Hey everybody. We're a couple more miles in to the hike and now we're further out from the blast zone. You can see Mount St. Helens in the background there. And all around me here, you can see fallen trees and the stumps of old trees. This is zone two, which is called the tree blowdown zone. Now zone one, which we just walked through earlier, everything was obliterated. All the trees, vegetation, 
Uh, the big landslide that happened because of the explosion took out everything. That's uh, about six miles radius. So everything within six miles of the blast was totally obliterated. So now we're in the next zone where uh, the landslide did not reach because we're higher up and further away. But instead, the sheer energy and force of the blast and the superheated air, superheated gas and debris reached this area seconds after the blast and toppled the trees in a matter of seconds. So as we hike through here, uh, you will see, let me turn this around. You will see everywhere is fallen trees. And any new trees that you see are young trees, less than 35 years old. And they've sprung up here since the blast happened in 1980. Uh, zone three, which is the trees that were still standing, but still singed by that superheated air, um, is between 12 and 18 miles from the blast from the mountain. But we won't see that because I'm not hiking that far. All right, let me turn around here. Going to get onto the campsite. Um, in the background there, can we see it? Let's see. There it is. It's Mount Jefferson in the background, right there. And as we rotate around, there's Mount St. Helens. All right, you guys. Hope you're having fun on your summer, getting out, hiking a little bit, going to see nature. The more we know about how nature works, the better we can live with it, right? Okay, if you like the video, click like. Leave a comment. Keep the conversation going. See you guys. Hey everybody, one last thing here before we leave Mount St. Helens. I'm on the way out and you can see we're in zone three here. Look at these trees, nice and healthy, big trees, right? Look at the size of this tree. How old do you think this tree is? Well, if we turn around, we have a sign that tells us this stand of trees was planted in 1983, so that makes them about 32 years old. Now remember, Mount St. Helens blew up in 1980, so just three years later, the tree companies came in and planted. Now it was the timber companies, the tree companies that owned all of this land that was devastated by Mount St. Helens eruption. All the trees, they stood standing, but they lost all of their limbs, lost all of their foliage, and died. So the timber companies decided to come in and harvest what they could and come back and replant every tree you see here. So every tree here was planted by hand. And what we have here is a crop of trees. So say what you want about the logging industry, but... It looks pretty green over here. It looks pretty nice to me. We'll be talking about more about logging. Uh, we'll be talking more about logging in July and all through the summer. So we're going to learn a lot. Okay, you guys. I'm back on the road. See you later.